one of the best places to start when you're thinking about Kubernetes security, especially Kubernetes network security, is RBAC. Now we're gonna be taking a look at RBAC in a general sense on Kubernetes, the native way, and then we're gonna be taking a look at an OIDC solution using Azure Active Directory. If you don't use Azure Active Directory, it's totally fine. This is just an example. It's gonna kind of work more or less the same way in other OIDC providers as well. So first things first, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a new service account. And I'm gonna say kubectl create sa, which is short for service account. I could also type out service account if I wanted to, totally up to you, Mike user. Then I'm gonna run kubectl get sa, and we can see the Mike user exists. So now what I need to do is I need to give the Mike user service account some type of permissions, because without those permissions, it can't really do much of anything. And that's where your cluster role or your role comes into play. Now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be showing cluster roles and cluster role bindings, which we're gonna to get to in a second, but you're also going to see on your Kubernetes journey roles and role bindings. The biggest difference between cluster roles and roles and cluster role bindings and role bindings is that when you see a cluster in front of it, that means it works throughout all of the namespaces. When you just see role, it means that it's dedicated to a specific namespace, as in this role, if it was a role and not a cluster role, it would be for only a particular namespace. From a functionality perspective, it's all the same. So like what you can see here, setting up the cluster role, if I did this and I said namespace default, the functionality is the same. Again, the only difference is I'm specifying a namespace. That's literally it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up a cluster role that's for viewing. So as we can see on line eight here, we have these verbs get watch list. And that's what you can do with pods if you are tied to this cluster role. So I'm calling it reader and it's coming from the named API group. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run kubectl create minus F cluster roles slash cluster role dot YAML. And then if we run kubectl get cluster roles and we take a look, scroll up a little bit here, we can see the reader, All right? Now what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to tie this cluster role to this service account. How do we do that? Well, we do that with a binding. So again, this binding, the API, comes from the named API group. We can give it a name here. And then what you wanna do is you wanna specify the subjects. Now, the subject, or the kind rather, it could be service count, could be group, or it could be user. In this case, we're specifying the service account, Mike user. We're not specifying a specific API group. And then we're referencing a role. Now this role is of course the one that we just created right here. And that's how you tie a service account or a user or a group to a specific cluster role. So let's go ahead and create this now. So we'll run kubectl, create minus F, cluster roles, cluster role binding. We can see that was created. One thing that I had to add in here was just the namespace for the service account, because that's where it's located, as in that's where the service account is located. And then if we run kubectl get cluster role binding, and if we go ahead and if we scroll up a little bit here, we look for read pod global, we can see that right here. And then we can also see that it's bound to the cluster role reader. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and head over to Azure really quick and see an OIDC solution. All right, so I'm in Azure here and I'm gonna to go to Kubernetes services and then I'm gonna click on my AKS environment. Now notice here that I have an option for IAM. And if I go ahead and if I look at this, I can view my access to see what I have access to. Notice here how I'm a service administrator. And what I can do is I can also add role assignments and then I can add specific roles. Now in here, I can specify somebody that's an admin, somebody that can just read, look at monitoring. But if I click on add here and I click add role assignment, 
at this point what I can do is I can say for example somebody is just going to be a reader just like we set up previously and then I can click next and then I can choose my members so for example maybe I choose AKS test and I click select so now at this point AKS test this user in my Azure portal will have the rights to read so read only access, just like when we created the standard RBAC role. And then I can click review and assign, and then I can click review and assign again. And then it's adding that role assignment. So now on AKS environment 01, this AKS cluster, my AKS test user now has read access to this cluster. And again, that's how, you know, let's say you do the same thing in AWS or in GCP. It's going to look very similar just with, you know, different options. So for example, in AWS, maybe you want to use IAM instead, but the concept is all the same. And that's how you can get started with RBAC in both an OIDC solution and a native solution in Kubernetes. Thank you so much for watching.